Okay, what we want to talk about right now is that the different types of errors that create that can come up in a hypothesis test. There are two types of errors. Um, the first is um, conveniently named a type one Roman numeral number one is what we use error. And in a type one error, it's very very specific. In a type one error, the null hypothesis is true, but the error is we reject it. And if a null hypothesis is true, we should fail to reject it. It means we should keep it. So the second type of error is called a type 2 error. And again, a Roman number number 2 is what we use for that. And here the null is false, but we fail to reject it. Once again, so if you think about these two types of errors, uh, type 1 error, the null is true, but we reject it. So if you have a null that's true, you should be keeping it, not rejecting it. So that's the error. And a type 2 error, the null is false, but we fail to reject it. So once again, if the null is false, you should be rejecting it. But the error is that we fail to reject it. So let's, let's um, quickly talk about... Um, that was a bad line. But anyway, let's quickly talk about the example we did in class earlier, or that we also had in our first video, was that the true proportion of cracked ingots is 20%. So that was the null hypothesis. That's what we were assuming was true. And the alternative is that we were hoping that the true proportion of cracked ingots is actually less than 20%. So if you remember this problem so we were talking about here. So in a type 1 error, the null is true. The true proportion of cracked ingots is really 20%. But we reject it and go with the alternative. So we think it's lower, but it's really not. So we would go with a um, we would go with a procedure for making these ingots that we think is better when realistically it's not better at all. A type two error is the null is false. It's not twenty percent, but we fail to reject it. So we keep a null that is false. So what happens is there is a program out there, there is a new way of making these ingots that actually works. It actually does lower the the um, proportion of cracked ingots below 20%. So the problem is, the error is, we fail to see that. We fail to reject it. So those are the two major errors that occur. And they're really kind of important errors to consider and to talk about. So once again, working with this ingots problem, a type 1 error is it's true that the true proportion is 20%. It has not actually lowered. But we think that it has lowered. We reject it and go with the, the alternative that it is lower. And that would be a mistake we would be doing something that doesn't work. A type 2 error, the null is false. It's not 20%. It's actually lower than 20%. But we fail to reject the null. So we keep thinking that's 20%. So we're not taking advantage of a new way of making it that's actually better. It actually is better, but we don't see that. So those are the two types of errors there. So let's quickly talk about the um, probability of these types of errors. Um, the Interesting enough, the probability of a type one error is equal to alpha, which is our significance level. So if we choose a significance level of 5%, that means there's a 5% chance that we make a type 1 error. If we lower alpha to be more stricter to 1%, then all of a sudden our type 1 error has only 1% chance of occurring. A type 2 error has a probability of occurring known as beta. Now the good thing for you is we never have to worry about calculating beta. It's actually very difficult to calculate. It's outside the realm of what we need to know. We just have to understand that beta is the value that we would use to describe the probability of type 2 error. And these two values always kind of work in um, opposites. If we try to lower alpha to lower type 1 error, beta increases. If we try to lower beta to make type 2 error lower, then type 1 error alpha increases. So they work in opposites of each other. Now there's one more thing left that we need to discuss in terms of all this, and that is the power of a test. Now the power of a test is really important. The power of a test represents the t ability to detect a false null hypothesis. So the power of a test is the ability and that's not how you spell ability. I gotta erase that real quick here. The ability to detect a 
a false null. So if you think about it, power and beta, which is type 2 error, are complete opposites of each other. So, the, so beta, remember, is the null is false, but we fail to reject it. Where the power of a test is your ability to detect a false null. If a null is false, you need to reject it. That is having a lot of power. Null is false, you need to be rejecting it. Type 2 error, remember, is the null is false, but you fail to reject it. So power is actually the complete opposite of beta, so power is 1 minus beta. That is the power of a test. So these um, three values, alpha, beta, and power, which is 1 minus beta, all kind of work with each other. For example, if I lower alpha, if I try to make alpha lower, I'm going to end up increasing beta. And if I increase type 2 error, I have low power. So power and alpha almost work in the same direction. Beta is always the opposite. So if I'm trying to lower alpha, trying to lower type 1 error, that's going to make beta increase, which is going to cause power to go down. Because remember, power is the complete opposite of beta. So if I have a bigger chance of type 2 error, that means I have less power, because power, again, is my ability to detect a false null. Also, I can look at the opposites of these things. If I try to increase alpha, then beta is going to decrease, and lower beta means more power, more power to detect a false null. So that's the basic idea of the different types of errors of a test, and um, we'll look at several examples later on using these um, values.